about 1968, 1969 is when Fritz really came into power and they had Southwest Sports that ran Dallas. They were affiliated with the NWA, which meant they were members of the NWA and had access to the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, at that time, Dory Funk. Dory um, would eventually drop that title to Harley Race, who would then drop the title to Jack Briscoe, who would then drop the title to Terry Funk, and so on and so forth. Uh, not Terry Funk, but then Harley, then Terry, and so on and so forth. But Fritz, really, you know, when Fritz's kids got old enough to work, start working, Gary was the booker, and Gary... They had a unique situation in Dallas because the Dallas-Fort Worth met metropolis has such a uh, large area to work that you could work, man, not even 60 miles from your house. Those were the trips. You could work spot shows every night and never have, have to travel more than an hour from your house. You know, they, they still ran the, the money town was Friday in Houston. That was a five-hour drive. They had run uh, San Antonio, Austin somewhat, but that was a Joe Blanchard end of things. And Fritz was, you know, the king of Texas because he, he was the guy that supplied the talent to all of those different markets. And Paul kind of looked at it like, all right, I'm going to use your office and, and Paul used the Dallas office because of its ties to the NWA, but Paul booked Houston separately. Paul would bring in his own guys. Paul would use it, had his own television and used his own programs. He didn't do the same thing that was being done. He didn't take Dallas TV and put it in Houston. He did his own TV. Paul was the host and Paul made the stories. Paul wrote the, all the angles and, and Paul was the one that was in charge of Houston from a creative standpoint and from a promotional standpoint. But Paul didn't go out beyond the Houston city limits. Every once in a while, we would run a spot show in, in Port Arthur, Texas, or Beaumont, or uh, Galveston. But they were those were little tiny towns, man, around the peripheral of the Houston market that got Houston TV. And didn't, you know, they didn't get Dallas TV. They got Houston TV. So uh, for the longest time, Gary was the booker. Red Bastine came in and Red Bastine helped out a little bit, you know, and booked Dallas for a little while while Gary was still there. But when it was time for Red to leave, then Gary took over the book again. And they, you know, everybody talks about world class, man. World class didn't come until so much later and, I, and i'm talking like the the 80s when um carrie had won the title so this, this people didn't get this man until after carrie won the title when they became world class that's when fritz broke away because fritz knew that his kids weren't getting the championship after that fritz didn't care for the way that they treated carrie he felt that Kerry should have had a run with the championship, and Kerry didn't. Kerry was a transitional championship. They did that as a feel-good moment out of respect for Fritz and the fact that, you know, David was really the one being groomed for that title that was going to be the, the long-term NWA champion. So Fritz got, got disenfranchised. There was a time that Fritz was the president of the NWA and wielded the power, and Fritz was the final say. That didn't last long either, because I don't think that, uh, you know, Fritz got the support of other promoters, and Fritz had his own territory to run and realized, that, man, I've got I've got a gold mine over here, and I've got all this, this gold that I'm panning in Kevin and David and Kerry that I'm going to bank on myself. And Fritz broke away from the NWA and formed World Class Championship Wrestling.
And in that, Fritz created his own championship. He created his own world-class champion. He created, you know, the tag team champion, the six-man tag team championships because he had three boys. And by God, he had three guys that were also made of gold in the Freebirds that came in and just popped that market. And I think that a lot of people will, you know, go back and they'll look at, uh, you know, boy, the Von Erichs really popped Dallas. I don't think the Von Erichs could have popped Dallas nearly as well as they did if it were not for the Freebirds. Right. Because you had three, you know, young, well, you had uh, Michael and, and Bam Bam that were young, and then you had Buddy Roberts. But you had three young, fresh heels that were different than anything that Dallas had had, you know, up until that point. And, you know, Gary had brought them in, and uh, Michael was like, Bam Bam, you need to get here, boy. Boy, you need to get where, wherever you're doing, you need to get here. This place on fire. And came in and programmed uh, the Von Erics with the Freebirds. And you talk about a historic, just great run, the Freebirds and the Von Erics, in my opinion. I'm from far. We had already broken away in 81, whatever it was, um, from the Dallas booking office and, and had gone to Southwest out of San Antonio, which we talked a little bit about last time. And, it, but the, the free bird Von Eric angle, man, that was live. That was some, um, that was their high water mark, right? By all or, means. Yeah. By all and, means. And that's Gary Hart's booking. Yeah. Yeah. And then Ken Mantell came out, came in after that. And, and I think, I think Ken kind of inherited a lot of the, uh, the free bird stuff. I know Ken gets knocked an awful lot as far as his, his booking and his booking style. I like Ken. I like Ken a, a hell of a lot. I thought that Ken was very well organized and he was, he had longevity. So Ken, when Ken books something, Ken was looking for the finish, you know, six months down the road. Mm. So people didn't always understand that, but you know, I got to know Ken and I got to travel and work with Ken actually booking when he was with mid South in that I, under, I, I understood what he was doing. Ken was a much more long-term booker than other people. A lot of guys, man, went in and they'd go week to week and know they had a big show that they had to get to the payoff on Kenny was looking at, okay, here's what we're going to do over six months. Then we're going to blow the son of the bitch off. But when we blow it off, this is where we're going to go from there. Right. And I don't think Ken gets nearly the credit that he deserves for the time that he spent in Dallas. And when Ken, when Bill Watts decided he was going to go into Dallas with, you know, it was no longer Mid South. It was UWF. Because by God, if there was a World Wrestling Federation, what's bigger than the world? And that's the universe. He's going to be the Universal Wrestling Federation. And Ken Mantell came over to book with Bill Watts, and I thought, you know, I thought Ken had a decent run, but Ken was rebuilding at that time, and that was after the Bill Dundee. Uh, time of booking in Mid South, so it was a completely different philosophy and different way in in how they booked. 